Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Hope you've all had a great week, and welcome to uh, my Friday Night Live. Um, something different this week, as you perhaps seen from the title, but we'll go to that closer in a moment. Um, I'm bringing the worms. Uh, as always, I have Mark, the gentleman woodturner, and Wayne, the woodturner, joining us. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Evening. Um, so anyway, what we're going to be turning tonight. I'm going to be turning a German hand stick or stick grenade, whatever you want to call it. This is the picture I've managed to find out. I've not been able to find too much on dimensions uh, other than the length and the size of the head. So I've sort of made up the rest of it. Um, but that's what I'm going to be turning. I've got a piece of uh, pitch pine here. Uh, it's an old newel post from a staircase. So it's four inch or 90 by 90. And I've t cut this about 420 mil long. Just enough to give me an end to holding the chuck and to part off. So that's the plan. Going to colour it. Um, Maybe. No, I'm going to colour it. <laughs> I'm going to colour it. It might not look right, but I'm going to colour it. Um, the reason being is because I want to try and make it as look as much. I've got two pictures. I want to try and make it as look as much as that, which is an authentic one, as possible. So um, that's the plan. So while I get this mad in the chuck, I'm going to put this between centres. Um, I'll put the camera on overhead and the guys will welcome you guys in. Right. Shall I do it, Wayne, or do you want to? No, you carry on, Mark. You've got the usual thingy. Yeah. I've got the usual thingy provided by YouTube. The participants list. Right, so, so far we've got Andy H is for turning, Barry Chitty, Barry's Wood Creations, BFT. Turning Barry Fisher, Ben Jamin, Doug Miller at Wood Spun Round, Douglas Mungham, Jared the French Turner, James Crawford, Lawrence Pagaja, Dale from Maple Tree Studios, Mr. Stacey Smith, Peter the Parkwood Turner, Terry Bartlett, Wood Wizardry by Colin, Wood Turning by Rab, uh, by Barry. Um, we've also got Ruby Clare, IDR Wood Turning. Um, Mr. Stacy Smith, Douglas Mungham, I think that's about everybody so far. Hello and good evening. IDR would turn in soon. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for coming over. So, I need Brian's to... here. Brian, Brian's in the house. <laughs> Brian's in the hood. <laughs> Right, so I need to obviously round this off first, down to around about this. Um, this is our widest part here, so this is around about 70 mil, and I've worked well. This should be 365 mil long, so I'm going to do this this head part about 100 mil long, and then obviously the the shoulder neck, and then the fuse cap. So get it rounded off to around about 70 mil all the way through, and then we'll do some marking out, and. Um, See how we go from there. Like I say, I think the first thing I'll do is put a mortise on the end. That'd be the best thing. No, a tenon even. Not a mortise. Dale's asking a question. He says, how long do you give me before I make a joke about um, fire in Steve's hole? <laughs> really? Ivy Woodshed's in. Oh, mate. Colin is asking. I'm sorry, Colin. I didn't mean to miss you. All right, Colin. Harry Chitty, Lawrence Pagaja, door 60. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, Colin, um, I managed to get hold of Mumbai Timbers. And I'm going down tomorrow to see what they've got. So uh, I'll let you know how I got on. So 
that's our tenon on there. So we move this back out of the way. Morale would turn in Zin. Hodgepodge is in as well. Hi, Hodgepodge. Evening, gentlemen. Hope you both well. Robin at Copperell, is that his name, Rob? It is, yeah. Yeah. So I'm getting to know all these names now. It's only been two years, but I'm getting there. <laughs> I've trouble remembering my own name, alone everyone else's. Who are you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, let's get this rounded off then. That's Ted, that is. What, Mark? It's Ted. Yeah, Ted. It's short for something. Not very good to do that. So, Steve, what made you decide? to turn a German hand grenade. You. When I was watching your live Monday night and you turned your your pen, uh, your envelope opener, as you was turning it round, the shape near enough of what I'm turning tonight just popped in my head. And I thought, well, so, it's a bit different, a bit, yeah. di bit different in a bowl. Don't be blaming me for this. <laughs> you know, doors to come in. Pete's asking, does anybody have any grip tape for some reason? Hi, Pete. Evening, Pete. I think it's about the longest piece I've ever turned on, eh? Ah, Lawrence is saying it's to explode the lathe so you can buy a new one with, with <laughs> reverse on it. I will say Nick was a little bit concerned when I said I was going to return that hand grenade. <laughs> Pete says... Uh, he was just thinking that with it being a hand grenade, perhaps Steve shouldn't drop it. <laughs> Good idea. Colin said, Steve, get in touch with Duxford. They might have it for their World War II exhibition. Yeah, that'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? And Dale adds boom, boom into the room. Lol. Peter Corcoran's in. Who, sorry? Evening, Peter. Peter. Peter Corcoran. Oh, evening, Peter. Um, Danny Boy's just joined. Hi, right, Danny Boy. How you doing? Hold up, man. Jez Cameron has just said, an M24 hand grenade measures 356 mil length. 
75 mil explosive head and 6 mil handle. Six six, sorry, handle. 6 centimetres handle. Oh, right, well, okay. Thank you very much. So, hang on, let me write that down. So it's free. 300, how long? 356. 356. 356. 356 long. 75 mil head. Yeah. And 60 mil handle. Yeah. Thank you very much. James Crawford is asking, Wayne and Mark, do you have your laden tools and shoulders? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Next it's question, Beaker. Sorry. That's all right. Is it that mine's on a special edition on my household insurance? Next question would be, what's your address? Deal is said it's a chuck and banger. Chuck and banger. Costy's in. Even and Costy. Well, oh, mate. Hey, Costy. Hi Neil. Neil. Mm, smells nice, sisters. Sharpen this gouge up. Hopefully, get a bit better cut on it. Um, what's the angle on that? 45. And Deals also said, Nick to Dirk the chicken banger. <laughs> Multilingo. Multilingo. Ling lingo. Ling 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 Linguist. Ling yeah, that's the one. He's a cunning linguist. Asking, what would it be? Well, it's a piece of banister, uh, and I think it's pitch pine. To be honest, that's the only piece of wood I had long enough to cut a piece out of. Yeah. Christine and Michael are in. Hi, Christine and Michael. And, and Terry's back from, from his jolly days. How is he? Yeah. Hi, back Terry. To back to reality. Ben's asking, has anyone has anyone ever had wood turning equipment stolen? Uh, yes, Ed Oliver, a few years ago, got the whole shop ripped off. Oh, yeah. Terry, it was very nice meeting yourself and your dear lady wife the other day. But it's already told me, Terry. We're supposed to say it. <laughs> Inner voice, outer voice. Inner voice. Yeah. <laughs> spoke it about this way. <laughs> right. So let's get some. Where's my vernier? There it is. Did I say Christine and Michael were in? Yes. Yes. Did, mate, yeah. All right. So this is. Right. So that's ninety mil. So we've got to take that down fifteen mil. 
Dead Emmett Rise Woodgrass. Good evening, Hi, Emmett. Emmett. Hello, Emmett. How are you doing, sir? Am I right in thinking doing the head end this end? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you want to keep near the thicker end near the towards stock. the headstock. Yeah. Yep, yep. Ruby seems she has some tools stolen at the wood show. It's disgusting, really, isn't it? Thieving tykes. Oh, seventy-five point five. Oh, measure that. So what do we say? Oops. Uh, he's retail shop Ben. Talking about Ed. In fact, I think they're both in the same place. He's his workshop and his retail shop. Yeah, his workshop's right next to his workshop's right next to his retail shop, isn't it? <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to rough mark this. Very squeaky pencil you've got there. Yeah, it ain't been paid for, that's what it is. It's not the pencil, that's my bottom. <laughs> Inside voice, outside voice. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, we spoke about that before. <laughs> right, so that's our thickness for that. So let's get a gouge. Clean that out of there. Made a flower pot. Katie's just come in. Hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. Bell's just giving you a super chat. Two <coughs> pound. It's a donation for less squeaky rubber pants. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. <laughs> squeaky pants. HodgePodge says, just so you guys don't have bad thoughts about me, I really didn't steal that wood in my last video. It's all right, Robert. We know it was Harry. <laughs> he, was, he was the criminal mastermind fever behind it all. Stephen is making um, a replica German stick grenade. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. <laughs> Got to change this tool stand. I don't like it. It's too long. I want a bit cutting off the end of it. What the post? Yeah, it's a little bit too long. It hits on the bed. But I don't know what I'm going to cut it with because it's stainless in it. I don't know if I'm... I suppose I could cut it with a bandsaw. But... Alright, so that's a little bit longer than what I want. Best in there for you, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, I'm up for that. Uh, 
message, mais... Hi, Rogerson, did you just come in? So I just got to try and look at this now and look at that at the same time. Hi, uh, Clive. Evening, Clive, sorry. Why don't you put the piece of paper down on the bench behind the lathe? What, like that? Yeah. Tell you what, you're not just a pretty face, are you? No, uh, you wouldn't think I've got two degrees. I've got two degrees. Vertical and horizontal. So this one will go down just over 60, don't this one? Let's measure that. Go on, see why I don't use this a lot for turning. It doesn't turn very well, does it? So I want another six mil for that. Do, 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 do. So what's everybody up to the weekend? And anything exciting? Um, I'll have to pass on that one. Filming tomorrow. What are you doing, mate? I mean, Mark, tomorrow? Filming. Filming. I don't want to leave it to the last second like I did last week. <laughs> this week. Well, I should say, but that was your best video. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's the point. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably be editing the video at some point tomorrow. What for Sunday? Yeah. It's a sixty. Well, Brian's bed extension has arrived in Northern Ireland. What about his tool post? Tool post. Yeah, he was showing me um, Sunday that his tool post he just bought was um, hollow. Oh yeah, the the um, the ball turn and uh, yeah. tool rest. Yeah, that's the one. It's yeah. just it's, it's just a hollow tube. It's not solid. Yeah. Blimey. And that that's direct from record. That is. Yeah, it didn't look very uh, very good. Returning by Barry is fitting new cameras. Nice. And Robert Robert Hodgepodge is going to be making a maraca. Maraca. A cucaracha. A cucaracha. Paul Kavner's in. Hi, Paul. So, I'm just going to take some of that off of there. Jason's going to be helping his dad clean out the garage this weekend. Good man. Yeah, go ahead, Dale. Dead rise is only uh, 400, uh, a few away from 400, Steve. So, Say again, sorry. Dale, dead rise was only a few away from 400, so Dale was asking, could we drop the link in? Yeah, not a problem. Not a problem yeah. at all. All right, Dale, you're probably quicker than me. Brian's needing to do some filming tomorrow. He's lost another video. He's good at that, Brian is. <coughs> what, how can you lose a video? He's probably dropped his computer again. Perhaps he didn't press record. I suppose when you get old, you forget things like that. Fred Keller for Zin. Hi, Fred. <laughs> Hi, 
I suppose I should have really promoted this video. Or live. I don't mind. Skin. Brian keeps on losing the video list because the panto horse he keeps the scare mark keeps on stealing them. Peter <laughs> just the trees is is saying, Steve, could you bring that handle shape down using a skew? I could do. Didn't want to say anything. Didn't want I, to say anything I could do, but I've not had a lot of practice with the skew, and there's no way I'm doing a live with a skew. Until I'm a bit more confident with it. And Emmett just jumped up to 405 subs now. Nice oh, one, well Emmett. Done. Well Pick such a big bit of wood. I don't know. Welcome to Spindle Turning with Steve. <laughs> I'm only making a toothpick. That's all I'm making. <laughs> Okay, he's asking, okay, what's the difference between the skew and the pointy thing? Which pointy thing? <laughs> Baby, do you mean a skew and a gouge? Evening, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. What, that pointy thing or that pointy thing or that pointy thing or that one? Which one do you want? <laughs> That looks a bit thick. Well, that's, that's 60 mil. That's, that looks too thick to me. That's... Yeah. Hmm. Let's get a bit of shape on it and see what happens. Um... Katie, the first one you picked up is a Martin tool. A skew is a angled blade. To use for turning. As Gil said, well, the pointy thing is a watching game. The skew is a secret tank to summon the demons, uh, three of the catch club. About right. What's that handle? So, about there. Well, Ian, the monkey hangers just come in. And Woodworm Paul's just come in as well. Good evening, Paul. Paul. Good evening, Ian. So three. Hi, uh, Paul. What's here, right? Hi, Ian. Three, five, six. About there. That's about right. Do, do, do. Andy Flanath is in. Hi Andy. Hi Andy. Andy. 
Steve just said, 107 people out of the 57 watching agree Steve should use the skew for all of this life. <laughs> just ban him, will you? <laughs> I couldn't possibly do that. I need him for Monday. Answered Pete saying 69 out of 72 said their cat is prefer it. Mm. Right, so just need a marker in there. If you are enjoying what Steve's doing, give him a thumbs up. If you're really enjoying what he's doing, down in the description there's a link to his uh, Buy Me A Coffee page, <laughs> where you can go to support the channel. Question there for you, Wayne. Jason. Jason. It'll it'll go in as far as the um, the vinegar soaks in, Jason. So probably only a, a millimeter or so. Yeah, it'll just be the, the, it's like using wood dye. It'll just be a surface thing. That looks better size, doesn't it? Yeah. It's been good set for the bakery hunk missing out of it there, mind you. I suppose it's, that's a better size. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So we just need to do the cap at the end then. So do, 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 do. just turn this down a little tiny bit. Ian is saying he's got a, a stick grenade in the garage so he can copy it to make a friend a few for his reenactment display. Nice. So, mark it. About there. He'll be right back. He's seeing various yetis. I've took up Roost in his freezer and he needs to have a word with them to keep the noise down. They're annoying the penguins in the freezer. <laughs> Another way to blacken an oak is to fume it using ammonia. Um, very dangerous, but it does work. Right, 
Right, so I'm going to part that. That looks too big to me, that cap. Actually, I'm going to part that there. Get rid of that. Round that off a little bit. What do you reckon? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Compared to the picture. Oh man, I've got shrapnel in my, my drink now. Make a cup for your cup. Make a cup for my cup, <laughs> yeah. I'll just yeah. cut hollow that out, I'll stand up on top like that. Right, let's get it sanded up then. I think I just need to clean that was a bit torn out there. See if I can make that a little bit better there. Lionel's in. Hi Lionel. How you doing? Bonsoir, Lionel. Ben Jamin's suggesting that you could turn this into a German hand grenade pepper mill. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Just trying to get a little bit more definition on those. Then obviously this is going to be parted around here somewhere. Who's asking what speed do you run the lathe? It seems a little bit slow. The lathe is running around about um, about 15, 80. Is that too slow? Is it? Yeah. Well, it depends on what you're comfortable with, really. Um, well, like I say, I've never done it. I don't do a lot of spindle work, so right. Hodgepodge is asking, what's the best method for drilling out 18 inch long pepper mills? Just a forstner or on an extension? Well, it would have to be on an extension. Yeah. Right. Not sure if it's space. Oh, no. is answering Robert here and that's what he did for his 400 millimeter pepper mill halfway from each end. That's a hell of a size pepper mill. Eighteen inches? Yeah. Well you got filler very often? Easy with Abrin, I think. And he certainly thinks it was 450 mil. That'd be 20 inches. Oh, that's. No, 18. 18 that's inches, 18. 450, yeah. yeah. 32 foot. Three foot. Yeah, 416 mil. Uh, 16 inches. Your dad's in. He's asking, is it going to be coloured? Yes. 
It is. An yeah. evening, Dad. How are you? He thinks he's going to colour it, but Wayne and I might stop him yet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It's always nice to have the support of your friends. Yeah. Never gave you that idea. <laughs> This is going to be tricky in all these little nooks and crannies, isn't it? Should I just round that? Oh, I should just round that. That's a hundred grit. One okay, I'm going to ask a stupid question now. In World War II, when the German woodturners were making these for the German army, do we think they were made on copy lace, or do you think they were hand turned by woodturners? Good question, actually. Well, I reckon they would have been done with women, personally. Because obviously, oh, yeah, all I mean, I do know. But Obviously, all the all the men would have been fighting. Didn't designate, didn't, de didn't designate the sex of the woodturners. You but said, okay. Did did were they made on copy lathes or were they made hand turned by woodturners? I reckon copy lathes. There's no way they can mass produce them like that, is there? And the obviously soldiers didn't care about; it, they just threw them away. <laughs> right. Well, kind of. Brian, yeah. Brian, in answer to Brian, somebody else looked up the the sizes for the stick grenade, Brian, and it was um, different sizes to what you put in. What's Brian put in then? I can't. I don't know. He's re he's retracted it. All right. I had three hundred and sixty-five mil long, and then the head seventy-five, uh, seventy mil. So mine weren't a million miles out of what someone said, but weren't exactly the same. Right, so that's uh, 120, 240. Terry reckons they were hand turned. Well, he would know. He'd been there, wouldn't he? Well, probably, yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's a basic handle. Yeah. Yeah, but when you think it about how many, the... how many they had to make, must have been millions. Who want that job? Would you? What am I doing today? Oh, just another four hundred handles left. You know, Brian said the handle should be 29 mil diameter. 29 mil. Yeah, the grenade itself 70 mil, and the length 335. Well, I've got 43. I've taken that down to 43, and that's about. Well, I've got big paws, but. It doesn't really matter, does it? As long no. as it looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> Terry Bartlett says, single use only. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. Right, so 400 grit. Oop, bit slippery. Okay, 
Anyway, I don't know why I'm even talking to Terry Bartlett after what he said in Friends Live the other day. Oh, did he upset you, Mark? Offering to drive Joe up to my house and film her beating me up. <laughs> eh? <laughs> so much for Devon's solidarity. Don't think I've forgotten. That was 320, this is 400. Sixty-seven watching, Steve. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming over. All right, let's stand up the four hundred. So Ben said, "I appreciate the handle is for leverage for throwing further, but it seems a lot of excess material or weight to carry." I don't know. I didn't design it. You know, Germans can be bigger and better. Over engineered. Right, so. Ian the monkey hangers asking if I've been upsetting Joe again. No. Never. Me? No. Mark wouldn't do things like that. Right, let's get some masking time. Adrian's just come in. Adrian Olsen, that is. Evening, Adrian. How are you, sir? Uh, tape, 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 tape. So I'm going to put some over the handle to start with. Oh, I don't you just love when it does that. And Chisky's just come in. Hello, mate. Hey, Chisky. Now, see, John Scarper says he's astonished that they were so big. They couldn't carry many of those per person. To be honest, infantry don't carry a lot of hand grenades. You only usually carry between four and six per person. And they could put six of those in a ca over the shoulder bag. No problem. Hey, Jason has said his new dust, dust collection system has arrived, so he's going to get it unboxed. He'll catch the end later. All right, mate. Nice. I'll well, see now Terry's offering his granddaughter as my bodyguard. She's taking up judo. She's only five. <laughs> that, says a, that says a lot for you, Mark. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm going to suggest don't do that, Terry, because she's a girl, so she's inevitably going to end up taking Joe's side. Then I'll have to fight both of them off and <laughs> lose. Right, forest green. Did I have a bit of forest green and spray gun? Let's have a look. Yes, I did. Oh, well, I was only laughing so hard because I said it, she didn't hear it. Right, so I'm just going to quickly spray these. That'd be easier than uh, messing around with. Do through what we call it, Fimmy Bob. So 
So what colour is that, Steve? Um, the make of it is the make of the manufacturer. Everything, everything brush. But they are good brushes. I don't know. What's the colour? Oh, it's uh, forest green. Sorry, I thought you meant the Eager. It's forest green, Hampshire Sheen water based forest green. Okay. Which I think will give me the sort of colour I'm looking for. I'm gonna spray something there. So we just have to finish the end off when the, we part it. I suppose I could have cut the end off really, couldn't I? And just kept so it on Adrian there. Adrian is asking, what inspired you to try this project, Steve? Not my fault. Not well, my fault. I was watching Mark's live um, <laughs> Monday night. And the PC turned. As he was shaping it, it came up with this similar... Well, not the exact shape, but very similar. And it just popped in my warped head <laughs> and I thought it would be something different than a bowl that was my thinking John Scarborough is asking wouldn't have that sprayed better if you'd been able to turn in reverse <laughs> what does it turn better Brian said, Brian said the shape of the handle varied between manufacturers some were smooth and tapered others squared off or stepped and they were all stamped before use, set fuse. And says he loves your thinking, Steve. Always good to try something different. Yeah, that's what I thought. And you never know, it could go off with a bang. Alright, so let's just clean this up. Next week, Steve will be turning a panda, sitting and eating a piece of bamboo. <laughs> In a tree. Bit of multi-axis off-center turning. <laughs> Would you like leaves on it as well? Yes. Carved with a Dremel. You said I weren't allowed to do that the other night. Carved. about a little bit of a sand. Don't listen to anything I say. Well, I did think that when you said it. <laughs> harsh. Fair, but harsh. I think I can finish in completely then. Just be the top to sort out. Right, so let's give that a coat of the uh, Hampshire sheen. Peter Corcoran saying if you turn a panda next week, it's got to be done with a skew. <laughs> uh. Well, looks like I'm not turning the panda next week then. <laughs> right. bit dark really but it's only a representation well, this, this is true just drop off a little bit
All right, so we'll have a look at that. I think we'll stick with that for the colour. Let's get this off of here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bit of Hampshire Sheen Earth, I think, for the handle. Then I'm going to gently just buff the handle back to to uh, make it look a bit worn. If I can get the tape off, that is. Must be kiddie proof tape. Right, so a bit of earth. I know I don't think I've got earth in. Oh, I might have, actually. No, that's green. Benjamin says, uh, he's replying to Adrian. He says, he's the, Steve has to pick shapes that he's unlikely to funnel, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to do a whole year with no funneling. Adrian said... What I want to know is what Steve's going to do with it when it's, when it's finished. He can't see them selling well at the local craft market. I could sell them to fishermen as a priest very yeah. easily. Yeah. A priest? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love you, son. No, it's for, hitting, it's for hitting fish on the head after you've caught them. Well, yeah, but if the bad that's, man comes... That's what a priest is. Yeah, I know what a priest is, yeah. Yeah. I've seen them. <laughs> yeah, there's a question for you there from Dad. How come he didn't seal it? Because I'm colouring it, Dad. You don't seal it first. You colour it first. We'll teach you. If right, you so use stains, you stain first, then seal. If you're using paint, seal first, then paint. So I'm using Hampshire Sheen Earth. Just to do the handle. Wayne told me that. <laughs> and Wayne is the master. Actually, that's quite nice. I like that. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to let that one go through. You are? That comment, Ben, that comment held for review, but I've let it go. <laughs> ben says... He's going to walk into Nicky's bedroom with a German hand grenade in his pants, claim he's a sex bomb. <laughs> sex bomb. And we all know what Nicky will do. She'll just roll her eyes and go, whatever. <laughs> no. She, I'll tell you what she did really do. She would fucking lay there and piss herself laughing. <laughs> Thinking, yeah, right, I wish. <laughs> I like that actually. I like that nice colour. Yeah. It almost looks. Uh, it almost looks like you've burnt it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's very dark, and the grain picks up really nice with it. All right. So let's just uh, dry that off a little bit. That would have been a challenge when I'm doing a pineapple grenade or a frag grenade. <laughs> Ruby says it's very similar to some sauerkraut mashers that she's made. Didn't know you mashed you sauerkraut mash as well. Yeah. Now the question is, do we wax it or do we leave it? Don't want it shiny, do we? I'll just leave it. Yeah, I wouldn't wax it. Andy's asking what the wood is. It's uh, pitch pine, Andy.
So I'm going to seal it, obviously. So I'm going to be using some uh, uh, chestnut products, chestnut products, um, sand and sealer, cellulose sand and sealer. Hodgepodge has a question. You could probably answer that better than I could. Wayne. No, no, don't make furniture. At least I haven't done for a long time. The thing is, if you use a sealer before using a stain, you're actually sealing parts of the wood so the stain won't get in very well. Better now, I've sanded and sealed it. <laughs> right, just give it another coat. Seems I'm not putting any wax off on it. Nice and shiny. Oh, yeah. Give yourself a shiny. I think if I just denib it, that'll be near enough, I think. Is there any wax that's not, well, don't finish with a shine, or is it, are they all, depending on how you polish them up? I don't know, you could have used an oil. Mm, have. Danish oil won't, won't um, if you only use one coat of Danish oil, that'll not um, shine up. Got some Danish oil. <clears throat> Is it too late now? For... <sighs> oh, no, no, just if you, if you knock it, have you got one of the orange web racks pads? Yeah, if you knock it back with that, very lightly, so you don't take the colour off, and then just put a din uh, coat of Danish oil over it. Ben says, Brian has a wealth of information. It's almost like he's constantly reading Wikipedia. <laughs> Brianopedia. Jennifer seeing us looking really nice, Steve. Thank you, Jennifer. Actually, I'm going to leave it like that. I like that because it's got like that old look to it. Yeah. I'm going to leave it like that, I think. Just pass it off there and just finish the top off. Grand. Do, 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 do. Without dropping it. Good luck, everyone. Drum roll, please. See, you can breathe now. I know I could hear you holding your breath. <laughs> I knew you was holding your breath because you were starting to go pink. Yeah, Brian saying he was a weapons instructor for 15 years. Cool. Alright, so I just need to clean that up. Unfortunately, that's going to have to be with the ball ball sander, I think. I know Wayne loves it. Oh, actually, no, I'll do it in the chuck. That'll be easier, won't it? Let's do it in the 
peggiosa pisia Douglas Mangum's asking, are you going to hire this out to movie makers? <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Douglas. I don't know about that. They tend to have their own props department, don't they? It's just a bit of fun in that. I did the 50 cal. I did the bullet, didn't I? Um, not so long ago. I did the big bullet out of resin. That was, that was quite fun. All right, so let's just gently turn this down. Everybody's very quiet tonight. They don't want to make any sudden noises in case it goes off. Yeah, Gerard said he's back for the end and it hasn't exploded yet. Yeah, TNT is very stable. You'll be all right. Mr. Stacy Smith says, looks very nice, Steve. Very underrated wood is pine. Yeah, this is, a, like I say, I just, this is a piece I brought, I, I fitted a new banister or a new uh, stairs for someone, and this uh, was the newel post and all that, so I thought, well, rather than throwing it away, I'll just use it for practicing. But, and the other thing was, it was the only bit I had long enough. It's quite a pretty bit of wood, actually. So I'm just going to take this up to 400, I think. Just give it a dust of colour. <laughs> What's Ben just put? Next week, Steve will be turning a traditional Australian bazooka. <laughs> no, because they come back at you, don't they? Turn a didgeridoo. I don't think my legs long enough for that. Last one. That's two forty. Four hundred. Douglas Mungham saying, Steve, next to £10 cannonball. <laughs> <clears throat> I've actually been asked today if I could turn an 18-inch Atlas stone made of oak. That's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Oh, can't, you, can't you 
Can't use my check for it either. What'd you say, Wayne? Sorry. I said I wouldn't. No. No. For one thing, Mark, you won't be able to lift it. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm just yeah. Oh yeah. That's true. Well, he can put it on the lathe for me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't risk that with his bearings. Putting something like that on. <coughs> I reckon there's a one off, it'd be alright. I'll send a warning in the minute, so. <coughs> Adrian's had a really good idea. Should haul him out the end, put a party popper in it. Oh. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a very good idea. And a string all the way through, so you pull it. Yeah. That's a very good idea, that is. All right, let's dry that off. What's the time, gents? Nine o'clock. Is it really? It's gone quick, isn't it? Dead Rise has just come back. So oh, yeah, Emmett. Great. Thank you, Emmett. All right, so a little bit of sand and sealer on there, and I think we are about there. The green always rises a little bit when you sand and seal it. I think that's it. Take my gloves off. So there you go, folks. What do you reckon? Where are we going now? Very nice, Steve. Very nice. Show us the picture, the original. Da -da -da -da. There's the picture. If you can see it, can you see it? Yep. Nothing wrong with that. I think this is a bit too long, but other than that, it's not far out, is it? Scale proportion. So, I like, I like. <laughs> Come on in, sunshine, you want a bit of me? Right, here we go. So, there you go. Where's the camera, this one? So yeah, I've enjoyed doing that. It's been nice. It's been nice for a change. Totally different for uh, from a blinking ball. So this is what I went from. Obviously, I printed two pictures off. Um, that's a traditional style looking stick grenade, and then that's more of the modern one because I know some companies still use them. So that's what I sort of tried to get that with. So yeah, yeah, that works. So that's the thing. So there you go, guys. Right, let's bring the guys back in for a minute or two. So, uh, nice, I like that. Something different. Doc Miller's saying you could use it as a shop mallet. Shot, that's pine, that's a bit soft, isn't it? What be a bit of oak or something, really, for that, doesn't it? But I like it. I'll just use it as, I'll just put it on the shelf as deco. I'll put it next to my bullet. Yeah. Your dad says, yeah, it's pretty good for an old boy. Oh, thanks, Pops. I'd like to say I got all my talent from you, but... <laughs> but he 
can't. Uh, he's a clever man, just not in the. Well, he's don't get me wrong. He's 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 good at what he does. He's a good word worker. He's good at plastering. He's good at painting and decorating. He's good at everything. But um, unfortunately, these skills come from a granddad, and he knows that. So uh, yeah, but no, I like it. I like it. It's very good. But he knows I love him. I love him to bits. I've got a nice little job for him anyway. He'll be happy when I tell him about the job I got for him. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go guys thank you so much for coming over and joining us um just a quick project tonight something totally different hopefully you've enjoyed watching um i've enjoyed doing it that's for sure something totally different <clears throat> it's uh been good very good what's next Ooh, what can we turn next <sighs> yeah oh, we'll, we'll figure something out so, so uh yeah, it's been good. It's just a bit of fun more than anything, isn't it? That's all it is. Yep. So if anybody's got any... What's her name? Oh. Who's he? Who's Emmett on about? Right, thank you guys for all the nice comments. Very much appreciated. Glad you enjoyed. Thank you very much all for coming over. Um, like I say, it was just a bit of fun. And once again, congratulations to all the people who won oh excuse me the two and a half k giveaways um we had i'll just quickly shout them out again first prize went to barry's wood creations which was the yorkshire grit microfine original hat and the, the extrude and you no know, emerging bottle wine bottle so that went to barry um second prize went to um, BFT Turnan, Barry Fisher. So congratulations to Barry. Um, that's the Starbond T-shirt sticker and um, the small bowl I done. So congratulations, Barry. And then I, the bit I turned on Sunday, I added that as well for a third prize, and that went to Christine and Michael Hesentine. Hesentine, sorry. So I haven't got them shipped out yet, but I will get them shipped out over the weekend. So hopefully you should get them early next week sometime. Brilliant. So. Uh, Right, then, guys, we'll kill it, shall we? Yep. Cool. So, thank Let's you, guys. Goodbye. Thank you very much for coming over. Um, we'll have have a great weekend, bank holiday weekend. So, have a great weekend. Um, I will be back Sunday lunchtime with my with Nick, and um, we will see you then. Uh, who's on tomorrow? Is Ed on tomorrow? Yes, yes, he is. He's doing some colouring. Right, so Ed's on tomorrow, um, and the likely suspects. Uh, I don't know if Hodgepodge has got a live tomorrow. Hodge, he... Hodgepodge will have a live two or three o'clock. Um, Emma's thinking about she has to see because Roy's a bit poorly, so right. Emma may not be on tomorrow night. Okay, so um, and then Sunday, you obviously got myself. Uh, Wayne will have a. Hodgepodge is on again Sunday. A... Uh, Hodgepodge will have a premiere. Uh, Tonage de Bois will have a premiere. Wayne will have a premiere. At what time, Wayne? Half eight. Um, Half eight. Half eight, nine o'clock. Half eight, nine o'clock. Then you've got Makers International. And then JP Woodwork. And then Caitlin the Cat. And then back to Wayne l Monday lunchtime. So, uh, so anyway, guys, have a great weekend. Um, speak to you soon. Take care. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Good night. Bye, everyone. Good night, everybody.